Last time we had done a circular link list where we used to add a new node before the first node. Okay. So, today we will be discussing a circular link list where new node we are adding after the last node. So, we will initialize uh, initially there is no node. So, last is pointing to null. Then uh, whenever first node comes suppose this is my first node. So, I will put my number inside it whatever is the number and if last is equal to null it means this is first node. So, last will start pointing to it and last next will start pointing to last. So, if it is first node this will happen. Let us see what will happen otherwise suppose we are doing it for the second node. So, I said a new node will be added after the last node. So, this is last node. So, after this I am adding a new node. So, since I am storing address of a new node in P. So, now P will be pointing here. So, P will point here a new node is created this side. I will put my number inside this whatever number I want to store and my first statement in this will be p arrow next is equal to last arrow next. So, p arrow next is equal to last arrow next. So, this is p arrow next, this is equal to this is last, this is next field of last. So, p arrow next is pointing where next field of last is pointing. My second statement will be last arrow next, next field of last will point at p. So, now uh, this will not point here next field of last which was earlier pointing here. Now, it will not point here where will it point next field of last will point at sorry next field of last will point at p. So, this was next field of last this will point to p and my third statement will be last is equal to last next or last is equal to p. So, now last will be pointing here. Okay. I will revise first time whenever I am creating first node. So, if my last is equal to null, if my last is equal to null then what will happen? last will point at p and last next will also will point at last or last next will point at p both are same. So, this is when last is equal to null otherwise this is for first time otherwise these are the three things. So, Using this you may implement a circular link list, you may create a circular link list where a new node is added is always added towards the right hand side. Okay. Now, let us again try it with the third node. So, if we have we already have two nodes. So, uh, this is my first node, this is my second node, 10 is stored, 20 is here. I already have two nodes. This is my last. Now, I want to add my third node this. Suppose, this is 30. So, I will repeat my statement. See, I will go up. Is last equal to null? Is last equal to null? No. So, this will this, if last is not equal to null then what happens? this will not happen. What will happen? I will tell you. If last is not equal to null, this will not happen. These things will happen. What are these things? P arrow next. Next field of P 
PE will be pointing to next field of last. This is last, this is next field of last, this is pointing here. So, next field of P will point where la next field of last is pointing. So, this will be pointing here. First statement. Second statement next field of last will point at P. Next field of last, this is pointing here. So, now this will not point here. So, I will erase it. This will not happen. So, what will it, it do? It will point next field of last will be pointing to P. So, this is next field of last, this will point at P. This is my statement number 2. Now, what is my statement number 3? Last is equal to P. So, now last is not pointing here, it will point here. Implemented. So, this is how do we add a new node in a circular link list after the last node. Okay? Fine. Now, let us try to simulate one example of circular link list and uh, we will be discussing something about multi programming first of all. See what happens in multi programming? In multi programming, there are more than one processes at the state of execution, while only one process is getting executed by CPU because there is a single CPU working on more than one processes. So, only one process is getting executed at any given time, but there are more than one processes at the state of execution. So, what happens? We give fixed time slots to every CPU gives fixed time slots to every process and after suppose we decide a time slot of 10 nanoseconds. So, for first 10 nanoseconds CPU will be working for first process. After that it will switch over to second process, then it will go to third process, then fourth process and suppose there are four processes and then it will come back to process number 1. So, this can very well be simulated using a circular link list, we can write a program for it. Let us assume that we are having four processes, we are having four processes. And every process is given a fixed time slot of 10 nanoseconds. So, this is my time slot by CPU. And uh, process 1, this is process 1 P 1, this requires uh, let us assume 40, 40 nanoseconds to get completed, P 2 requires 20 nanoseconds, P 3 requires 10 nanoseconds and P 4 requires 30 nanoseconds. So, now what we can do? We can just uh, insert all this in a circular link list. Of course, we will be having a pointer here to access this circular link list. Now, what happens uh, for first 10 because we said our time slot is 10 uh, nanoseconds. So, for first 10 nanoseconds the CPU will work on P 1 and after working on P 1 for 10 nanoseconds after processing P 1 for 10 nanoseconds the time required for pro uh, process 1 to get completed is 30 nanoseconds. Then the CPU will uh, switch over to process number 2, it will work here for 10 nanoseconds. So, after first 20 nanoseconds, this is the status. Then it will go to process number 3, it will work there for 10 nanoseconds and after 30 nanoseconds, what will happen? P 3 will get completed. So, this will get completed. So, once this gets completed, what we can do? We can remove this node from this circular link list. So, what has happened after 30 nanoseconds P 3 is over. Then 
CPU will uh, switch over to P4, it will work there for 10 nanoseconds and after that 20 nanoseconds work is required in process number 4 and then the CPU will come to process number 1. So, that is uh, uh, say after 40 nanoseconds it has come to process number 1 and after working there for 10 nanoseconds. So, now again 20 nanoseconds uh, job is required in process number 1, processing is required in process number 1, it will go to process number 2. It will work here for 10 nanoseconds and after that what will happen? This will be over, this will be over. See when this is over, at what time has it happened? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So, after 60 nanoseconds, now P2 is over, P2 is complete. So, after that what will happen? We will delete this also from our circular link list. Now, we will go to next node, CP will go to next node, this is the next node, it will process it for 10 more uh, nanoseconds. So, then 10 nanoseconds job is required after how many nanoseconds? After 70 nanoseconds, then it will come back to P1, it will work, uh, CP will process it for 10 nanoseconds. So, after 80 nanoseconds, this is the time required for process 1 to get completed, then it will come here and after 90 nanoseconds this will be over. So, now what will happen? We will delete this also. So, after 90 nanoseconds P4 is over. Now, what happens after this? Now, there is only one job which requires 10 nanoseconds. So, after 100 nanoseconds, this will also be over. P1 is over. So, what is the total, total time required? Total time required is 100 nanoseconds. Now, if I process them one by one, 40 plus 20 is 60 plus 10 is 70 plus 30 is 100 then also 100 nanoseconds will be required. So, if CPU is working on a single process at a time completing it, then also 100 nanoseconds will be required and if CPU is working on a time sharing basis on 4 uh, processes, then also 100 nanoseconds are required. So, what did we gain in multiprogramming? See, what has happened if we analyze uh, P1, P2, P3 and P4's completion time, it has been seen that the shortest job was which was the shortest process, uh, process P3. So, P3 got completed first. So, the shortest process got completed first. It means the waiting time for shortest process was minimum. Then the next one, then the next one and the process which was requiring the maximum time that is 40 nanosecond got completed at the last. So, the process which requires the smallest time will get completed first, then the second is smallest and so on and the process which requires the maximum time will get completed at the last or we may say that the waiting time will be distributed. So, this is about uh, if we want to simulate this using a program. So, you may write a program what you can do in, in place of uh, instead of doing it for 4 processes, let us do it for n processes. So, value of n will be supplied by the user. Same way this time slot may also be supplied by the user. You will, user will say how much time slot CPU, uh, CPU will be working on a single process. So, that may also be supplied by the user. Based on it, you may uh, through a circular link list, you can find this type of results. You may simulate this multi-programming time scheduling of this multi-programming. Okay? Fine. Try it.